Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. Guess what I'm going to discuss today? We're going to talk more about this three-jaw chuck because that accident that I watched the other day, it just didn't have to happen. And I think if there was more awareness about clamping specific materials or different shapes, then incidences like that don't have to happen. And I'm talking about the brass nut, brass bolt video. So forgive me for that. But to raise someone's awareness is to raise a... <laughs> raise their safety as well say that three times fast all right we're going to do a hex because that was the culprit in the video just about this size too we're going to do a piece of round material that apparently looks round but maybe this is a casting forging who knows and we're going to do a piece of aluminum but we don't want to mark up the outside of the aluminum that's why this took off out of the machine we're going to put a shim around the outside and we're going to squeeze down on it and we're going to show you how much pressure a three jaw really exerts so let's step over to the lathe pop these pieces in and i'm going to show you something that you may or may not be aware of but stick around for a couple of minutes and you're going to scratch your head and go hey man that's awesome all right let's do it all right let's take a look at the fact that there were shims between the part and these jaws not a bad idea if you want to protect the surface that you are gripping on against the surfaces of the jaws. This is a cylindrical grind in these jaws and if you grab on a flat surface, it's going to leave teeth marks in it. So putting a shim in there, although it protects the surface, it does not allow the jaw to bite into the part as intended. I like to put my shims lengthwise. Have as much contact on the shim as there is jaw to part contact. That for me would be an ideal setup. It's as long as the jaw is making contact, it takes a whole bite. If you were to put it sideways like this, you've effectively compromised the amount of potential grip you have in this setup by only focusing on the shim. Keep it in mind. Shim compression is also something to be aware of. Okay, the next piece up at bat is the hex. Super fantastic setup, three jaws, 120 degree sides. This is gonna be a piece of cake. Slap it in, lock it down, got it, nice and tight. But, here's the butt. Anybody can see this yet? I know you're going, whoa, you didn't do it. Yep, here it comes. This is nice and tight. I mean, this is in there. But, if you go, there it is, not tight anymore. It's not tight because we didn't look for the low spot of the hex. Sometimes if you have shims jammed in here and you need six hands to do it, you think you're lined up and you're squeezing it, a little bit of pressure from a cut in the wrong direction, and you find that low spot pretty quick because the part jumps out and hits you in the head. Let's draw the camera back, take a look at how the chuck key responds when you're looking for the low spot. I will reload this hex piece, that hex piece, back in the jaws and I will slowly turn the hex back and forth as the chuck key comes around. Watch the clocking of the chuck key as the jaws close. As the key advances to its lowest point, it's going to be pretty clear to see where that point is. I'll see if we can catch them both at the same time. There you go. After doing this a few million times, and just because someone's going to say something, I'm taking my jewelry off. I don't intend to turn this machine on, but I don't need any negative comments. Alright, chuck key is about, now forgive me for walking away from the machine. The machine is out of gear, I'm the only one here, it is powered off. And I do not like doing this, but I need to check the camera. There you go. Now you can see the key is about 10 o'clock. If you're looking down at the face of a clock, this side of the key is about the 10 o'clock point. But the part is tight. Now as I rotate the part back and forth, watch for the key to advance on the clock. 
Oh yeah, look at this, 3 o'clock all the way down to 4, all the way around, look at this. And I thought the part was tight before. When you get to the part where the key will no longer advance in the clock, wiggle the part back and forth, oscillate it, and the key will advance ever so slightly to its final resting position. At this point, torque down on it. You can load this up as much as you want. It's going to go forward, reverse, as much torque, as much resistance from the cut as you want. This part is not going to let go if you are not at the low spot. Any load on this part, out it comes. Guarantee that's what happened. Bowling right in line with the high spots of the hex could be high spots and low spots on castings, forgings, or just irregular material. This is something that you need to get in the habit of doing if you're going to have any kind of safety and rigidity on a three-jaw chuck. Here's your part. I'm going to push it against the back just for laughs. I'm letting go of the key again, so no negative comments here. I'm looking for the alignment in the lens. And it's a good thing I let go. Alright, there we go. Now for those of you that can't tell, this particular side of the key right here is about 4 o'clock as I look down the key. As I rotate the part, let's see what happens to this particular part. Coming back to three, there's over at one, back to three, all the way around. It's at nine o'clock now, it's still moving. I think we might have the low spot, which we do. So as you find your low spot, oscillate back and forth, see if you can get any more rotation out of that part. The key has come around to the 10 o'clock region, so I got almost three quarters of a turn extra out of that because I looked for that low spot. If the jaws are true, the body of the chuck is true, when you do that, when you find the low spot, it will help you to clean the stock because the high spot is now going to be sticking in between the jaws. This is a true diameter and any uglies are sticking out. So as you turn it, you should have to take less time to align it if you do this initially. Super important guys, look for the low spots on stock, look for the low spots on forgings, castings, rotate irregular shapes, not irregular, but rotate shapes that are seemingly going to be so easy to grab, look for the low spot, watch for the key to come around, don't lock it down until you have found the absolute lowest spot on the jaws. Stay safe, be safe, keep the parts in the chuck, watch your hands, good luck. Thanks for watching.